Hello, Hadaka guy here. Uh, in this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about electrical wiring and electrical uh, crimp terminals, uh, specifically the difference between automotive grade electrical wiring and crimps versus marine grade wiring and marine grade insulated uh, heat shrink crimps. Um, the kind of go over the differences of these and maybe when you would want to use one over the other. And then uh, let's talk a little bit about the crimp tools themselves, uh, the differences between a standard crimper and one that is specifically designed to uh, work with the insulated uh, heat shrink terminals. So uh, with that being said, let's jump into it. All right, let's start off by talking about the difference between a standard automotive grade wiring and the marine grade wiring. Uh, this is a piece of standard automotive grade primary wire uh, right here. Uh, this is very representative of what you would find at uh, any automotive supply house, Napa, etc. Uh, basically, it's just standard uh, multi-strand copper wire that's all twisted together, and then an insulating jacket goes over the top of it. This is what's in most vehicles already. Um, if we spread this apart a little bit, you can see that each of these individual strands is just pure copper. Like I say, it's all twisted together and then the insulation is put around it. Uh, the, the main problem with this particular wire is when you uh, put it in wet environments. So if this is going to be on a boat, if it's going to be underneath of a vehicle, uh, maybe in the engine bay where it's getting wet, um, what will happen is over time these road salts and the water will corrode these, uh, this copper wiring and then you'll start getting intermittent electrical problems. Um, so what will happen is a lot of times you'll go and you'll, you'll cut this off and you'll strip it back to put another connector on it and you'll find that that corrosion, the water has traveled down inside of this jacket and sometimes the corrosion can extend quite far down the wiring. So you end up just cutting, cutting, cutting and chasing that corrosion back through the wiring until you finally find a piece that's clean that you can tie back into. So uh, there again, not, not ideal for wet environments, um, but pretty, pretty common. Um, in contrast to that, you got marine grade wiring. So marine grade wiring, um, basically the same exact thing. It's comprised of individual copper strands that are twisted together. And then you've got your insulation. Uh, you can see on this one here that the copper strands are quite a bit uh, thinner than the uh, copper strands on the, on the other one. So the thinner the individual strands are and the more of them, the more flexible the wire is. So this one is really flexible if you need to bend it around corners, etc. Um, you'll see that uh, I said that it's copper just like the primary wire but it looks silver and that is because each individual uh, strand of wire of copper wire is uh, ran through a solder bath and is 100% tinned or soldered uh, before it is uh, twisted together so by by pre tinning this wire uh, the full length of the wire it makes it very corrosion resistant so now when water gets uh, in contact with this or salt uh, you're not in direct direct contact with the copper itself and it's a lot more corrosion resistant. Um, so there again, this, this application works a lot better for uh, marine environments, uh, maybe like say underneath the car, uh, in the engine bay, et cetera. Um, you know, it's just a really good product to use. I use it throughout all my builds, both internal and external. Um, the wire we're also looking at here is this is a duplex wire. So you can order this wire in many different, uh, different types. Uh, this uh, duplex wire basically has uh, two wires. So you've got your uh, positive and negative wire. They're individually insulated. And then those wires are wrapped in an oval insulation jacket um, on top of that. So this extra jacket uh, makes it uh, quite a bit more abrasion resistant and also gives it another layer of, of water and moisture protection. Um, this is what I run through the walls, like in my current uh, Sprinter build. Um, I, I use this uh, duplex wire pretty extensively. And then I'll take a piece of uh, plastic loom and I'll put this over top of the uh, duplex wire as there again, as just an extra layer of abrasion uh, protection. And then I'll put my snap ties around this and uh, anchor the wire into place. So um, really good stuff. Um, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the uh, crimps itself versus uh, maybe a, um, an automotive crimp versus a marine crimp. So 
Here on my right is a standard grade automotive crimp. Um, you can see that uh, it's, it's just a hard plastic shell and that is uh, attached over the uh, metal itself where you're gonna crimp the wire. Like I said, this is pretty standard. This is what you're gonna find at all your standard automotive stores and standard hardware stores. Uh, over here on the left, uh, this is a marine grade unit. Uh, so a heat shrink unit. So it's got heat shrink applied to the outside of the crimp. And then on the inside of this uh, heat shrink is uh, a thin layer of glue. And what that does for you is when you take a, a wire like this and you uh, stick the wire in and crimp that down uh, and then you hit it with a heat gun, this insulation here, or this uh, heat shrink, will grab onto the outer insulation jacket on the wire itself and uh, do a couple things for you. One is it makes a more waterproof connection to try to keep moisture out of the wire. And two, if you pull on this wire accidentally, um, now you're not just pulling on the mechanical crimp where the wire's crimped, you're also pulling, or it's distributing that load onto the jacket itself. So it makes for a lot stronger and more reliable connection uh, using these uh, heat shrink uh, connectors versus uh, the uh, cheap plastic uh, ones that you get at most of the most of the supply stores. Um, depending on where you live, some of these marine grade products can be hard to come by. Um, there is no marine grade or uh, marine supply store around me where I live. So I order all of this stuff in. Um, most of it I get through Amazon and I'll put some links uh, down below in the description below the video but uh, I try to keep this stuff in stock um, I use this quite often on various projects so I try to keep my connectors in stock and my different uh, grades of wire uh, for the duplex wire I usually try to keep in stock uh, 12, uh, 10, and 14, and then you can see here I've also got some uh, 12 and 14 uh, single uh, wire as well and then on the crimps, uh, these are pretty inexpensive. Um, there's different brands. You can see that this one here is a, is a Wirefly. Um, I've got another kit over here, uh, Sapobi. And then I've got an electrics kit uh, hiding back here. Um, when you open these kits up, they, they all look identical. Um, the quality is all the same. Um, all three of these brands are, are uh, really good deals and they're pretty uh, affordable on Amazon. And then over time, I found that there are certain ones like the uh, butt connectors or the spades that I use more of than other terminals. And then what I do is I just order these uh, larger, this is a 200 uh, piece set, and I just use these to refill my individual containers um, as I use those up. Um, I always travel when we uh, hit the road with our camper rigs. I always take an electrical repair kit with me. So uh, one of these kits and my tools and uh, my Fluke multimeter um, always go with me. And they've, been, they've come in handy uh, on more than one occasion. And then uh, let's talk a little bit about the crimping tools themselves. So um, on this, this is your standard uh, crimping tool that you're going to find at your autom standard automotive store. You can see this one says Napa on it. Um, this is uh, great at crimping uh, these uh, pl hard plastic uh, terminals. And in fact, I'll go ahead and crimp one here and show you what it does. Well, so basically when you crimp, a, there was no wire in this one, but when you crimp a terminal with these, uh, you can see it really bites into the plastic. In fact, you can see right there that it, it went through the plastic. Uh, these, these cutters or these crimpers have a very sharp square edge on them and they're pretty thin and they work okay on these style of connectors, but when you use them on a heat shrink connector, what'll happen is they will tear or cut through the uh, heat shrink itself. And then once you shrink it, you'll have a cut there and the uh, waterproofness will be uh, compromised of the, of the connector. So um, you don't want to use these standard uh, uh, wire stripper slash cutters on the insulated terminals. Um, this is my insulated uh, terminal tool that I use. It's made by Titan. I believe they're around $20 a piece. Uh, this one has interchangeable jaws on it. So if you want to use it for other style of uh, terminals, you can. This one is set up for uh, insulated terminals and that's all I use this particular crimper for. It's a ratcheting, uh, ratcheting crimp. And basically to use this, uh, let's go ahead and crimp one on a wire. 
So if you take your wire and put it in the terminal, you take your jaws and you squish it down and then you got a nice solid, uh, nice solid uh, crimp. So at that point, we'll uh, hit it with a heat gun real quick. Get it warming up here off camera so we don't have to listen to that. And uh, this is just a demo, but you can see I've got the wire stripped back too far. You wouldn't want the wire actually stripped that far back. But uh, that is your final connection. So you can see that it's uh, grabbed onto the uh, insulation here on the wire. Like I say, you wouldn't want to crimp, uh, strip it this far back so that the uh, connector grabbed onto more of the insulation. But like I say, this is just a demo and I already had the wire stripped. But you can also see that where I crimped it is uh, no cuts in the insulation. Where if you take the, let's take another one. Let's take these crimpers. See what happens with it if I crimp them. You can see that it cut there again. It cut into the, uh, into the heat shrink material. And then now when I shrink this, you know, you'd have a gap here, moisture could get in, and it would also affect the integrity, the strength of, uh, of the heat shrink itself. So uh, these are well worth uh, having in your kit. If you don't have a pair, I'd say I'll put some uh, links down below, but uh, this Titan one has held up really well for me, and I've used that uh, quite, a, quite a bit. Um, like I said, these are fine for the uh, standard old, uh, plastic uh, connectors that you get anywhere, uh, you know, down at, down at your local supply chain. Um, that's a quick overview of the differences between uh, marine uh, heat shrinks and marine wire versus uh, standard primary wire. Um, if you like these videos, uh, you can hit the like button down below or subscribe. I'll be doing some more uh, tool reviews uh, as we continue to build our van out here in the near future. And uh, you can also follow me on Instagram at Hadaka Guy Tom. Uh, I post pictures of our build updates and uh, pictures of our travels. So um, thanks for watching and I hope this helped and we'll see you next time.